Okay. You can do it. Put your elbow first, I'm just going to size it up first. Let's see how it fits. Ouch, ouch, ouch. The day of Amber's brain surgery has finally arrived. After a lifetime of living with the debilitating effects of Tourette's syndrome, she and her family are hoping today's operation can finally provide some relief. How important is today for you guys? Oh, a new beginning for her to have the same opportunities in life that everyone else has. As bright as she is and is social and outgoing, for it to be her own, her own choices, not something that she was given that she can't help. There she is, the guest of honor. So probably we should put a pillow. Kelly? So how does one pick music for, for surgery? What are, you, what are you looking for? I like country. You like country? Do you understand everything that's being done today? Yes. Okay. How are you feeling about it? As good as I can be. Okay. <laughs> How'd you get to stay awake through the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. I heard. <laughs> if you just watch the internal capsule and watch the boundaries of these structures, you can see. So that is what we think looks like a pretty safe trajectory to get there. Dr. Oaken and Dr. Foote expect the operation to last at least 12 hours. Axial is negative 12. Before any incision is made, the entire surgery is mapped out virtually. We're going to attach this stereotactic arc to her head ring and use this to aim. When you talk to her ahead of time, patients always ask, uh, how likely is this to work? You know, how do, how do you answer that question for them? Well, you know, uh, anytime it's an experimental procedure, I always say, you know, the price you pay for an experimental procedure is that no one in the world can say, I've done this a hundred times right. and give you statistics and say it works X percent of the time. And she was, she was good with that. I mean, she, she, she was at that point in her life where... Yeah. You can imagine living her life. You, you, you would be willing to try something if you could be convinced that it was reasonably safe and had the potential to minimize your tics. Yeah. All right, here we go. So, so what I'm about to do is not painful at all, okay? It's not a painful procedure. Wow. It's just really loud. All right, here we go. To begin, four holes are drilled into her skull. Okay. One down. <laughs> so you're now a member of an elite club. Very few people can say they've had a hole drilled in their skull while they're awake. Dr. Foote and his team have performed more than a thousand deep brain stimulation procedures. But the additional contacts they are placing on top of Amber's brain are new and still being tested. So we said left cortical first, right? We want to split the contact so that we have got some over the premotor region mm -hmm. so we can sense the ticks before they happen when they get premonitory urges, but also over the motor region. What, what is so interesting here is that when you think about Tourette's, you're thinking about something that is almost half motor, motor movements, and almost half emotion. So when you take a look at what they're trying to do, they're actually going right in the middle. You got motor on one side, emotion on the other, and look at that line. That goes right down the middle of both. To make sure they found the right location, they stimulate the leads on Amber's motor cortex. How are you doing? That involuntary twitch, that's a good sign. Is this gonna change? <laughs> Next, the deep brain electrodes are lowered into place to capture neuronal activity. Okay, let's get the lights down. So what we're listening to now is three channels, so it's like a, an orchestra, so it's an ensemble. Oaken gradually drives the electrodes deeper and deeper, listening as the cells talk to him. Okay, all three channels are up, guys. Got a burster coming out of the posterior channel. They are telling him the best place to implant the remaining leads. And then when you hear that crisp sound, that means you're really close to uh -huh. you know, a group of neurons here. It's total, um, you know, blow your mind kind of stuff because, you know, yeah. you just sort of, we, ha we really have no idea until we get in there and we really start to look at the data. Does it surprise you at all that we do these procedures without having better knowledge of, of, of the how or the why? It does. You know, it really does. This is the, uh, the, the operating room is the experimental laboratory. laboratory for the human. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and have you tick just freely. Don't don't suppress your ticks. Let them let them let okay. come. Okay. You can see when she's having her ticks. You're seeing activity deeper in her brain, not just in the more superficial areas. Take a look over here. With the new lead successfully implanted on top and inside Amber's brain, the doctors have essentially created a new network. It's an early version of what they hope will someday become a tick detector. So we're recording from 16 different locations in her brain right now. And, and this, I mean, what you're describing really hasn't been done before. Right, but uh, we're also trying to figure out what causes this. So in some ways, she's, she's uh, sacrificing for kids in the future. Right. right. Well, Dr. Oaken and Dr. Foote now believe they've given Amber the best shot at leading a normal life. But keep in mind, it's just day one of six to 12 months of return visits, recalibration and tweaking before she could potentially get there. And also before they can really understand what's happening inside her brain. You were a trooper. I mean, you did great. Because that's a long operation. And that's honestly, we, we do this on people who are awake all the time, but we don't do this much. She came into the operating room at 8 a.m. and we brought her out of the operating room at 8 p.m., which in, in, you know, during that time she had, depending on how you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six operations. She did great. She did great. After an exhaustive surgery, Amber knows she's been given an incredible chance at a new life. I feel honored, I do. And my niece and my nephew are what's really pushing me right now because I want them to see, I want them to grow up and see me, you know, be a productive member of society. And that to me is not ticking. For Amber, the road to recovery will be a long one. Doctors Oaken and Foote told me they will use the coming months to learn from the grid they placed on her brain to regulate the electrical impulses that will manage her tics. Amber has spent 20 years struggling with these tics that invade every moment of her life. With help from her doctors, she will have to retrain her brain to unlearn ingrained behaviors. But like all the DBS patients the doctors treat, their goal is to use the data they gather from Amber's brain to help heal many more patients in the years to come. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Thanks for watching.